Let's talk some sports, baby. better than today and make today better than yesterday and you know what we gonna do we gonna holler at you until next time Stay all right drink well it is uh it's come down to this uh the arguably most exciting weekend of college football is upon us uh, tonight conference championship weekend starts with the pac-12 title on the line between usc and oregon the other four power five conferences are in action saturday uh, every game has legitimate playoff implications on saturday so can clemson catch their revenge you know for notre dame will note will florida make bama sweat i mean go ohio state be upset I mean, these two lost teams have a chance. I mean, you know, there's some, there's some, there's some stuff in here, you know. But let's go ahead and um, answer those questions and probably more. And we're going to go ahead and run down all the conference championships. And we will start with the Pac-12. We're, we're recording this about 7:30, so we're before the game starting. Um, we'll have it out right about when the kickoff is. But what do you think? Uh, you know, we got Oregon taking on number 13 USC. What do you think? Um, I, I see Vegas got uh, USC minus uh, by three points. I think that's probably between three. Between three and seven points, I think USC, I think it's, I can get with Vegas behind that. Uh, here's the deal. USC has been, you know, in, in the abbreviated season that the Pac-12 has had, the USC has been the best team in the Pac-12. Um, I know a lot of people wonder, you know, hey, what about Colorado? Where well, we've seen Colorado. Um, that, that That's not going to cut it. Uh, I think the U- – and I, th- I also think USC, they also – even though I don't think the Pac-12 champion is going to get into the playoffs, they still plan for something, right? Um, at least if they win the game and become the Pac-12 champions, now they have a legitimate gripe to talk. But um, will it happen? I doubt it. But, you know, USC still playing for something. They could probably finish the, the season in the top 10 somewhere, go off to the Rose Bowl if they don't make – well, the Rose Bowl is a playoff game, I'm sorry. So, they'll, you know, they'll go off, you know, play a, a New Year's Six – game and you know go on and have something to build on for the next season and maybe the coach might be able to stick around i think that's the biggest factor here if usc can you know finish strong and be the pac-12 champion you know maybe the coach hang around for another cycle or two and we'll let's see if he can get his feet under him and build it and looking at oregon side listen this was a, a complete rebuild for oregon I'm, I'm just gonna call it what it is listen i know oregon is a highly you know powerful recruiting power across the nation. Probably the best team outside of USC when it comes to recruiting in the Pac-12. However, it's a lot of guys on there I don't recognize. I'm just going to be real. It's a lot of guys you can see coming in for their first time, meaningful snaps. Oregon, do, they do, do not look the same that they usually look on most years, hence the reason why they're not ranked right now. However, like I said, they do recruit. They will be back. Um, Oregon just gave Mario Cristobal a nice extension, so he'll stick around for a while. So, I mean, the game should be compelling, but I have USC winning between three to seven points. Yeah, I have uh, I have USC just covering the spread as well. It'll probably be close. You know, Oregon does, like you said, they do recruit well, um, but they did fall down the stretch. They lost to their rivals, Oregon State, 41-38, and then they followed up with another loss to Cal, 21-17. So definitely disappointing. They couldn't get that game in with Washington. You know, now it's USC. And it's interesting, USC kind of – kind of got the same treatment Iowa State did a little bit where the, the rules didn't really get changed, but USC is not supposed to be in this game. I think Washington is supposed to go, but Washington um, – couldn't go to the game for whatever reason, so or the COVID issues. So USC got to go instead. I don't really understand why, because I, I think Washington's three and one too, and USC's five and zero. Oh. But again, again you know, the, the argument's been all week. You know, the USC is like banging this drum. They're saying, "Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're we're a blue blood. We're a, you know we're we're a big team. We're a big name. We're five and zero. Oh. We're about to be a six and zero oh conference champion. Why are we thirteen right. and Ohio State's four and I mean, the only answer right. I can come up with is, well, Ohio State's been better more recently than y'all. But, but like, it, it again, it's calling into question this, this thing where we have our objective and our eye test that tells us our four best teams, and we have your paper resume. Because I put the paper resumes in, the only difference you can tell me is, well, one team has a top 25 win, which is Ohio State over Indiana, which is a quality win, no doubt. 
Yes. USC doesn't really have that, but the Pac-12 also started so late they didn't really have any ranked teams. We don't really know who's all actually good. I mean, they beat um, they beat Arizona State, and, and we saw they're kind of good, maybe. So I don't know. But the bottom line is uh, USC probably not going to get in this year. But I think that USC is building momentum. I think if they can finish right. the season strong, you, you come in next year. I mean, could they be back? I don't. You know, let's see. Maybe you get kind of good, and then maybe maybe you can get Urban Meyer out of retirement. I don't know. But you got a lot to play for. I think they are going to cover, and they're going to. Uh, they're going to pull it out. You know, if he comes out of retirement, it's going to be USC and Notre Dame. Let's be real. But that's a it's can of worms for another day. So let's right. go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll roll along. We got the Big Ten up next. They're going to kick off at noon. It's number 14, Northwestern, and number uh, four, Ohio State. So Ohio State is a 18-and-a-half point favorite. What say you? Yeah, so I think this is going to be another classic Ohio State prime time. Well, let me say not prime time, but one of one of big these noon uh, kickoff, sir. big noon kickoff, right? So it's like early prime time, I guess. But I think it, it's going to be one of these these famous Ohio State games we get. They're going to sleepwalk in the first half. Northwestern got a good enough defense where Justin Fields might not be as explosive. Chris Olave, Terry Wilson, those guys might not be as explosive. But as the game goes on, Ohio State talent is going to show more and more and more. And then I think it's just going to break the will of Northwestern. However, I don't think um, Ohio State covers. I, I think Northwestern going to play them, you know, down to some somewhere in the fourth quarter. And we, we, we probably have about a 14-point win. I don't, I don't know if Ohio State's defense is good enough to – make the cover, but then on the same side, I'm thinking to myself, is Northwestern offense good enough to make Ohio State secondary pay for being so lackluster this year? I can't honestly say that that's true. Um, so with everything said, Ohio State will win the Big Ten championship. It's just I don't think they will cover. Yeah, I, I have a little bit opposite. I, I do have Iowa State covering. Um, I, I just It is more that I have no faith in Northwestern. I mean, Northwestern, we all know, is just kind of here because that just happens to be who's here. Northwestern lost to Michigan State, who Ohio State beat missing like 23 scholarship players. Like, and it was a dumpster. I mean, it wasn't close. So I just feel like that there's such an ocean between what Ohio State's been doing this year and what pretty much everyone else in the Big Ten's been doing with the exception of Indiana, who gave them all they wanted. You know, I, I just don't see – Worlds where Northwestern is that competitive, and Ohio State needs to be careful because if Northwestern is competitive, if this game is a seven-point slugfest and Justin Fields those two picks, and they're out there, the defense looks like Swiss cheese. They need to be careful because they, their spot is not a mortal lock with only six exactly. wins. You know, I know the committee. You know, the committee has favored them and they have kept them in the top four. So you would imagine there's not a lot of worlds where they would slip out of the top four with a win. But, I mean, yeah. you know, if there's some crazy stuff, Iowa State goes out here and puts 70 on Oklahoma or Florida wins and some other crazy – I don't know. I mean, there, there's just what I'm saying. There's, you know, there, that, there's a lot of teams in that review mirror, and objects may appear closer than they are, but they're still pretty close. So, they might want and, to go out here and take care of business is all I'm saying. And, and, that's, and that's exactly – I forgot to mention that point. Another reason I think Ohio, – Ohio State has a lot of pressure on them. Mm -hmm. um, in this weekend, I think they have probably the most pressure on them. Why – I mean, even like the winner, of the, the loser of the Big 12 don't really got pressure because the winner and the loser of the Big 12 championship going to play in New Year's Six Bowls. That's just what it is. I don't think I was getting – I was state. We're going to get in that. And then I look at the ACC and look at the SEC. So when I look at all the Power Five conferences, I think Ohio State has the most pressure on them this weekend. Right, because they're probably playing, besides Oregon, probably the most inferior opponent of any matchup. And, you know, they, they need some style points. They can't just win by a field goal. So I, I agree with that. All right, let's go and keep rolling. Uh, Big 12 up next, number uh, 10, Oklahoma, taking on number six, Iowa State. Oklahoma still, though, a six-point favorite. What do you think? So – I agree. I think Oklahoma is the better team. I think we, we have to remember this. Um, they, the second-year quarterback for Oklahoma, uh, Spencer Rattler, uh, he played behind Jalen Hurts all year, so he didn't really get any, you know, real playing time. And then this year, he, he was a first-year starter this year. And I think it took him a little bit to get his feet underneath him. Listen, these guys come in with all the talent in the world, but it's different levels. From high school to college, it's a big jump. I don't give a rip what you was doing in high school. You know what I'm saying? You probably played in some little 2A high school, and now you come into one of the biggest stages in college football. 
it's going to take an adjustment period. I think uh, Spencer Rattler has figured that out. And I think Oklahoma is a better team right now for it. And then let me go to Iowa State. Now, Iowa State is on a win streak since losing um, to Louisiana. Um, I forgot how many games straight they've won, but I think it's six games, actually. Yeah, they, they're on a six-game winning streak, actually. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, not against the best competition, but listen, I got to give credit what credit do. Uh, they didn't play themselves to this position. This is the ceiling for Iowa State, though. Make no mistake. This is the ceiling because Iowa State ain't – they can't compare to no teams in front of them. I'm sorry. Not Texas a and them. No, you don't, nope. you don't think – let's just say let, – let's just pretend Ohio State, like, just whatever. They lose, and there's a fourth spot. You don't think they can jump A&M with a win over number 10 Oklahoma? Nope. Nope. Because it, it, it leaves the committee – like, the committee already been contradicting themselves. And I'm telling you, if they – if what the, they're hoping that this doesn't happen because they, neither one of these teams gonna, shouldn't be a, should be a playoff team, whether it's Oklahoma or Iowa. I, I just don't think. Like I said, if everything goes in chalk, you, you, and we're going to get to what, what our final four teams are, but to answer your question, no, you cannot. This is the, the closest you get to selection Sunday is the closer you get to those ugly losses you had or – those, um, you know, the strength of schedule. This is this is where we're about to look at all the little things now. Is on Selection Sunday. That's where they get blatant. So that Louisiana loss and that other, like, the committee's about to pick that apart now because this is where the, the rubber meets the road. The rubber meets the road. So with that said, I think Oklahoma does win this game and they cover and no, Oklahoma would not be in the playoff conversation. Okay, and what I was at, again, as I was asking, is I think it was if Ohio, or, sorry, if Iowa State were to win, yeah, I don't think no, no, Oklahoma just, can jump. But you, well, no, 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 just, but way. I mean the same thing for both right, teams. You make either like, way. Okay. yeah, I don't think Iowa State would jump right. either because they're what's going to happen. I think is the the committee will look and say, listen, Texas A&M played just as many games as Iowa State. They played in a tougher conference. I don't think Texas A&M would have lost to Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? And we right. don't know that. But those are the type of conversations that's going to be had, and I think that's going to hold Iowa State back. Right. So you look at Iowa State's schedule just real quick. You know, they lost to uh, Louisiana Lafayette uh, week one, 31-14, but then they beat TCU. They beat Oklahoma. They beat Oklahoma 37-30. Uh, then they their other loss was to number six at the time, Oklahoma State, on the road. They lost 24-21, and then they won against you know some pretty ant competition since then. They did get a nice one over Texas, 23-20. Uh, but uh, for the most part, you know, that's what we've been working with. I, I look at it, and I, I think – I still think that Iowa State could – get in I still think that the committee I just you know how like it is on selection Sunday where one team doesn't is a and playing are they are they playing Tennessee still or has that game been called off I don't no 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 from from my understanding that game is still on yeah, still on okay so I, I, I haven't think that seen helps to at least be in action on Saturday um to be like playing a game of any kind just to you know keep them in their their minds so I, I think if Iowa State comes there and just destroys Oklahoma I mean maybe there is a chance but it, it's outside and I think Oklahoma's a better team now I think Oklahoma's gotten a lot better like you said think about you know when's the last time Oklahoma had to develop a quarterback when's the last time they didn't just get exactly. some arm for hire they just showed up exactly. and threw five, five thousand touchdowns I mean it's been a while so yep. no doubt that they were going to hit a little of a speed bump this year but I think they've been getting better and better if you look at one of these teams that started the season to now that's probably not the same team at all they're probably the same brand of Oklahoma football which is throw it 500 times don't play defense but hey that's just how it works over there but uh yeah I have Oklahoma State uh, only uh, I'm sorry Oklahoma not only covering but had them beating Iowa State in that game all right so we got two to go we got a uh, number three um, Notre Dame, number two, Clemson. This game's also pretty close on the line, but Clemson surprisingly favored by about 10 points. Um, so what, what do you think? Yeah, first of all, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think Clemson's going to cover. Um, I think we had to put some respect on Notre Dame defense. I think their defense is for real. Now, granted, I got it. They played against DJ. I can't say the rest of his name the first time around. Um, but this time you're playing against Trevor Lawrence. It's a different ball game. However, Trevor Lawrence – hasn't really faced this type of smoke either this year. Um, so it's a double-edged sword. I got it. He's the better quarterback, but who the hell has he played this year to make you think he's ready for that defense? Like, so, and then if you want to say, well, true, or, you know, true freshman quarterback went in there and did that on him, that's because you don't have tape on him, but you have tape on Trevor Lawrence. 
It's a difference. It's just like that backup quarterback that comes in, Marcus Mariota, and lights up the world. And then you're like, oh, where'd that come from? This is the first time he didn't play this year. Like, of course. Plan, right? You know what I'm saying? So once you get tape on him, try, hey, let me see you two weeks down the road. You come on in and see what happened to you. And I think that's what this is. Um, but I do think Clemson wins. They win a close one. I'm, I'm looking at this be a field goal win for Clemson, actually. And I'm waiting for the chaos to ensue once that game is over. You know how I feel about Ian Book. I'm not the biggest fan of Ian Book. They can't run the ball, kind of, sort of. Ian Book can make – he he can make plays situationally, meaning, you know, third and short, red zone, et cetera. He could probably make some plays. Um, I'm not overly impressed with, you know, his skill set, but I am impressed with their defense, and I think if you can play defense, it can keep you around long enough. I don't think Ian Book is a welcome mat to where defense playing out of their mind and you still stuck. Like, I don't think that. Clemson defense have been a little questionable up to this point. So you can score points on their defense. We have seen that. So that's why I think 10 is a little much for Clemson. I'm going, I'm, uh, I would, you know, I'm thinking about a field goal. Clemson wins. And then we, we're talking about this all over again. Yep, I uh, pretty much in agreement here. I, I think that uh, we're looking at about like a 38-31 sort of game, you know, about six points. I, I think that there will be within the, the spread here. Um, the thing with Trevor Lawrence, I, I, I completely agree in the argument that, well, the backup, who's like a nine-star recruit, he did, he played exceptionally well. That's why I agree that I think the game will be very close. I think mean, people go, oh, well, Trevor Lawrence, back there, went by five touchdowns. Like, no, they're not. Like, they're not. Like, you know, it's not like they had, like, Nathan Peterman's ghost out there trying to play quarterback, you know. But yeah. the problem is – the problem is that Trevor Lawrence, we all know at this point, is that team. He's the heartbeat of that team. He's the guy, like, they're going to play with so much more confidence and, and composure, and they're going to just – they're going to play better overall. Because, I mean, again, it wasn't – I mean, the quarterback threw for, like, 470 yards and four touchdowns in that loss. So, you got – there was more going on than just the quarterback. So, mm -hmm. I, I think a guy like him can come in, stabilize everything. And, and I, I agree, too. I just – I don't think Notre Dame is a top team. I just I, – I just, I've watched them a couple times. It's not even salty grapes. I mean, even when I watched them play Florida State, I was like, I don't know. These guys don't look that much better. I mean, I'm, I'm not seeing, like, what I should be seeing here, you know. And I've watched them a couple other games. And every time I'm just – I'm underwhelmed. I mean, they had a 12-7 to win over Louisville. I mean, Louisville. You know, like, I, I just – something because about – it does not seem there, you know? Notre, I, I feel like Notre Dame plays up and down to their competition. And that's yeah, not that's not is. championship. Right. That's not, you know what I'm saying? That's not championship mm -hmm. football. You know what I mean? You If you better than the team, you need to go out here and take care of, take care of the team. Because you think about it like this. If you're going to make the playoffs, right, you're going to get compared to the likes of Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, you know, Oklahoma, whatever. Imagine this: If Alabama play up and down like Notre Dame did, what they would say about Nick say, man, it might be time for him to hang it up. It's the end of the Bama dynasty. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can still like, be undefeated, but yeah, just the margin would be what we'd be debating, right? Yeah. Exactly, right. So Notre Dame is flying under the radar because they're not considered a powerhouse to that level. But still, if you're talking about being in the playoffs, you got to play with some consistency. We right. about to find out if they can do that. All right, so I think I think that's the, but this is the most interesting. I think it's the most interesting matchup of all these because yeah. you know I, I think again you know if Notre Dame gets waxed you know, they they're not guaranteed to keep a spot you know no. where where I think Alabama is the only team that can lose and just keep a spot no matter what you know yeah. Notre Dame doesn't have that luxury and uh, it'll be interesting to see if Clemson can get them back in the rematch. So all right, well one game to go. Obviously a uh, little one you know you might have heard about um, one old SEC championship number one Alabama. And now the number seven ranked Gators after their uh, faux pas last week. Uh, Bama now as a 17-point favorite. Think that's enough? Think it's too little? What do you think? Well, I think it's too little. Only reason I think it's too little because I think uh, Florida getting a little ahead of themselves. They selling the fight, as they say. So I can't be mad at that. Um, they're getting people riled up. But here's the deal. When you're on this level, so when, when like Alabama been on this level for so many years, you know, it's a saying, act like you've been there before, right? And so Nick acts like he's been to an SEC championship before. It's the same business, different suit. Atlanta's my second home. Here we come again, right? And then you got Dan Mullins. Listen, good season. We ain't mad at it. But listen, don't, don't get mad at Alabama because you're coming in here with two losses. 
and you could possibly win this game and still don't make the playoffs. You, it, don't, it, that's not our fault. You got to take care of business. So I, I think Florida is handling this a little bit like some rookies. There's some JV stuff going on right now. A lot of trash talk and, you know, Dan Mullins, they asked Dan Mullins, um, if you win this game, do you think you should be in the playoffs? And he made a comment like, we're not going to worry about that now. We'll do that after we beat Bama. Like, uh, okay. You seen what Ed Orgeron said last year, right? And you seen how that turned out. Like, I don't know. Man, maybe you, you need to button it up a little bit. Um, Trayvon Grimes, one of the outstanding wide receivers, he, he comes out here and he's like, we're going to beat the crap out of him. Okay, cool. So now if I got – if I had a chance, I'm, I'm, I want to take – more points. I'm, it's probably Alabama about 24, possibly 31, because the last time the team came, this disrespectful. You seen what happened. Um, but to the actual game itself, listen, we got two outstanding offenses. We got two top five offenses here. We got two candidate. I mean, two Heisman like, candidates. Three, probably. You know, if you want to count Devontae Smith, but yeah, Devontae quarterback, Smith, obviously. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Two two Heisman level quarterbacks. And then we got some other guys that's been mentioned in the Heisman. We got Kyle Pitts is the other guy for Florida. Then you got Devontae Smith. You got Najee Harris for Alabama. So this is a star-studded game. All five guys that I mentioned, they're, they're playing to also not only make the playoffs, but be first-round picks in the upcoming NFL draft. Um, so you got a lot going on here. This is why this game is the nightcap of championship week, which is usually is. But that's why it is. Because you have a lot going on here, going down there in Atlanta. It, it should be interesting. I The difference here, Florida offense is going to make plays. I will not sit here and act like they scrubs because that would be blasphemy. They're going to make plays. Dan Mullins is good at what he do. That's just the, the, that's the truth with the gravy on it. He is good at what he do. But the problem is you got to play both sides of the ball, not to mention special teams, and that might be something too. But you got to play defense. And I read a report where Todd Grantham said he's getting a lot of guys back this week that he hasn't had, and that, that's going to make the defense better. So you finna bring some rusty guys on the field that's supposed to stop a well-oiled machine? Cool. All right. Whatever makes you sleep good at night. However, I think that's going to be the problem. They don't have enough guys to stop Alabama when Alabama starts rolling. When, when Najee start running in between the tackles, when that offensive line start blowing – your defensive line to the next state. You don't have enough to, to handle that. But hold on. Wait a minute. Hey, Florida can do the same thing. Yeah, they can for a period of time, and that's the difference. Alabama can do it for all four quarters. Florida tends to run out of gas at certain points. And for my Florida fans, we're in this bull crap. If I'm lying, why the LSU – Hang in there with you. Why'd you go out three three and out three straight times after you got the lead against LSU? Right? So it shows that you guys can get stagnant and run out of gas a little bit. And I don't want to hear that crap. Well, LSU recruit, we played in the week before. So well, what's the excuse? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think, I think that, Alabama's got some good players, too, if I remember. <laughs> yeah, I think they recruit that, well as well, if, ever, if I remember. Yeah. Right, right, like, right. Yeah, I, I'm with that. I'm with that. It's just, listen, if you're going to bark like a big dog, then come to the table and be ready to get criticized like a big dog because that is how it works. Heaven is the head that wear the crown. Alabama deals with this year in and year out. Now it's Florida turn. They out here getting upset. I think Alabama about 24-plus. You know what it is, roll tie. All right, yep. I uh, I had this closer. I, I think that what you're going to see out of Florida is they're going to play possibly the best game of the year. I think these guys are going to come out. The way these disappointing losses, we all know how this works. One or two things happen. Either you come out completely mail it in, completely dejected, season's over, hate my life, and you just mail it in and get rolled by 40, or you galvanize, just like LSU did last week. You know, they were sick of the noise. They were sick of the crap. They had one chance left to prove they weren't as bad as they were. They played with their hair on fire, and they stuck around in the game. I think that the the recipe of your Florida, number one, obviously, is the Kyle Trask has to have a Heisman cementing game. I mean, he has to be he has to be outstanding beyond the word outstanding. Um, number two is your defense has got to be opportunistic. Now, I don't think that a Todd Grantham can call a game to really shut down the Alabama offense. They're too good, obviously, and Todd Grantham's not very good. Anyway, if he throws all these Bush League blitzes and corner blitzes and crap, he's going to get – Mac Jones is going to eat that crap for breakfast. It's going to be bad. But if he can play it smart, keep it in front of him, 
play a little bit of bend, don't break, and you can maybe create a turnover or two. You get a turnover or two. How, how does any underdog stay in a game? You get turnovers early. You, you stay and then you go, oh, well, well, crap, we can stay around in this game. Yeah. Just like last week. I said, oh, as you did, all of a sudden, oh, well, we're in this. I think that's one way Florida can do is they can get an opportunity or two. They can pounce on something, a, a muff punt or whatever else. That's not something Alabama does a lot, so it's going to be hard. Yeah. But, hey, beating Alabama is hard. She's going to break your eggs and make your omelet. So <laughs> I, I think that um, the, the whole Florida offense has to be just electric and amazing, and Kyle Pitts got to have his best game. Kyle Kateri's tone's got to have his best game. The other guys like Copeland, they got to step up. Even then, the, the big problem for Florida is obviously they are deficient on the defense. I don't care who's coming back. I don't I don't care if the 2008 squad's coming back. I mean, they're going to have a hard time on defense. Um, okay, maybe if they come back, but still. Uh, you, you, know what I mean. you know what I mean? There ain't no players in that, that front office or on that mm-hmm. campus this year that can really make all the difference. Um, right. But, you know, you're, you're going to have the deficiency on the defense. You're going to have to score almost every time you touch the ball. And Florida can't run the ball. They can't run the ball to save their lives. So, without that balance. Right, I forgot about that. that Florida right. doesn't. So, even if Florida gets a lead, they can't just sit on it. You know, you guys, you, you get a you get a 14-point lead. All right, all right, Najee, here you go. Here's the ball every play. We're running halfback dive, Florida. Stop it. And they won't be able to. But <laughs> – I think that Florida wins a close – I'm sorry, I think Alabama wins a close one. I think it's like 37-32. That kind of, I think it's going to be a thriller. I think it's going to be close. But I do see Alabama kind of pulling away. Maybe Florida comes back late and tries to get close. But I think Alabama's going to hold on and win. I think it'll be close. All right, well, that was that. So um, about, got about time to wrap it up. But let's go ahead and um, – since we laid all that out, who's your, your final four and in what order? Um, one, Alabama. Two, Clemson. Three Ohio State, and then four is between for me. It'll be between Notre Dame and Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. And if I I got it, I think they will value what Notre Dame had done over the season, beat, beating Clemson. That's a pretty that's a damn good win compared to Texas A&M got a win over Florida, but that kind of got watered down with the loss to LSU. It'd be, it'd be three losses if Alabama wins. So. With three losses, you right, you right. right. Um, so it, that that's probably the resume dagger for uh, Texas and them. So I think uh, Notre Dame will get that fourth spot. So it'll be yeah, Alabama, Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, and Notre Dame are like the top four for me now. And I I pretty much agree. I think that's about how we're gonna go. We didn't really have any picks that were different from each other. I think that again, what it's gonna come down to is how good Notre Dame can look. If they're going to lose the game, you've got to look good. Every possession, every play, it matters so much. You go out there and you get your break speed off by 20, 25 points. I don't know. I might have to wonder about if AM should get in or if Iowa State should jump up and get in. I don't know. But I mean, you you, you screw around. I mean, if you keep it close, you you play your heart out, and it's just you know they get the last play or whatever. All right, but you know th- there's a lot to play for. And again, Ohio State kind of in the same boat. They got to play well too. They if they go out and lay an egg and win by three off a block extra point or something. I mean, you know you you got to wonder. You know, I just you keep thinking about how the committee has kept A and M at five in every ranking. Exactly. There's a reason they're doing that. I don't buy. It. I don't think A and M's all that good, but. I, they're there for a reason. And if, right. the, if Notre Dame really and Ohio State have a lot of pressure to play well, and if they don't do it, it's like well, it's, could get crazy. And, and, of course, there's a couple scenarios where some chaos happens. And Right. I, I was just going to say, like, the committee has made it very clear how they feel about the SEC. Like, once Alabama got their chance to be number one, that was a wrap. It, it would take a pretty horrible uh, performance. But then you see Florida State, they drop one. I mean, not Florida State, Florida drop one. And I understand, like, people are like, what the world? Only one? But, you know, Cody, you made a good point of uh, why they will only drop one, because you have to look at the landscape of the other teams. Why would they drop any further? Like, they're not, they're not worse than any of those teams behind them, just because they just lost. Um, and then you got Texas A&M. Like you said, they didn't roll that fifth line, the whole playoff uh, reveal. Uh, so that shows you, and even Georgia sticking around in the top 10, that shows you the level of respect that the committee has for the SEC. Therefore, that is why I give Texas A&M a chance. But, I mean, if, you get, if you're being honest with yourself, no, Notre Dame will probably get that spot. But like you said, chaos could – all we need is a, a Clemson loss or Ohio State loss, and then we really talking some trash then. Oh, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's see how it plays out. <laughs> 